Hey everyone, this is Charles Hines. I'm the pastor here at Prospect. Thank you for tuning in to our Proverbs Bible study. It's online uh, that we have uh, every week, and I'm not the best at getting them out consistently, but you have it every week. Uh, so uh, we're going to be picking up in Proverbs chapter 12 today. This is going to be part 12. Uh, we're going through this book, and it has it shows us so much of discipleship of what we should be how we should be, and, uh, and, and what we should follow. Uh, of course, we hear all the time to follow Jesus, to follow God, follow His ways. And, and Proverbs opens up more and more of our eyes of what His ways are and opens his eye, our eyes to the wisdom, to the ways of God Himself. And so uh, I believe that this is one of the best books of discipleship and, and helps us be able to see uh, God's ways. And so in Revela in Proverbs 12, excuse me, Proverbs 12, uh, we see uh, some more practicalities. Chapter 11 started it, chapter 12 continues it. Now, we see little Proverbs. That's really what they are. Uh, we are getting into this point where it's like one uh, phrase at a time. And we see what the, the, the wise versus the fool. And um, we, we see how how there is a stark contrast. I believe the devil tries to convince us a lot that there is not that much of a difference between a Christian and a non-Christian. And it, it, Proverbs spells it out for us and says there is a big difference. But also, uh, when we when we go out and we actually do see the, the difference between someone who is a believer and a non-believer, uh, we can see this as well in our lives. So, in, Revel, uh, in Proverbs, gosh, I keep saying Revelation. I don't know why. In Proverbs chapter 12, uh, this is what the Word says. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but whoever hates correction is stupid. Good people obtain favor from the Lord, but He condemns those who devise wicked schemes. No one can be established through wickedness, but the righteous cannot be uprooted. A wife of noble character is her husband's crown, but a disgraceful wife is like decay in his bones. The plans of the righteous are just. But the advice of the wicked is deceitful. The words of the wicked lie in wait for blood, but the speech of the upright rescues them. The wicked are overthrown and are no more, but the house of the righteous stands firm. A person is praised according to their prudence, and one with a warped mind is despised. Better to be a nobody and yet have a servant than pretend to be somebody and have no food. The righteous care for the needs of their animals, but the kindest acts of the wicked are cruel. Those who work their land will have abundant food, but those who chase fantasies have no sense. The wicked desire the stronghold of evildoers, but the root of the righteous endures. The evildoers are trapped by their sinful talk, and so the innocent escape trouble. From the fruit of their lips, people are filled with good things, and the work of their hands brings them reward. The way of fools seems right to them, but the wise listen to advice. Fools show their annoyance at once, but the prudent overlook an insult. An honest witness tells the truth, but a false witness tells lies. The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. Deceit is in the hearts of those who plot evil, but those who promote peace have joy. No harm overtakes the righteous, but the wicked have their fill of trouble. The Lord detests lying lips, but he delights in people who are trustworthy. The prudent keep their knowledge to themselves, but a fool's heart blurts out folly. Diligent hands will rule, but laziness ends in forced labor. Anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. The righteous choose their friends carefully, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. The lazy do not roast any game, but the diligent feed on their riches of the hunt. In the way of righteousness there is life, along that path is immortality. So this right here, uh, we go into chapter 12, we see the contrast between good and bad. 
We see whoever loves discipline, they love knowledge. Whoever hates correction, it says is stupid. That is the word of God. <laughs> uh, to believe in, in the King James, it doesn't use the word stupid, I don't believe, but it still is a, uh, a bad idea. It is stupid. Um, it, we need to always love knowledge. We need to love discipline. We need to love the word. Uh, the word says in, <clears throat> I believe, Second Timothy it is, uh, that he who the Lord loves, he disciplines. Uh, the, the, the word disciplines and, and, and keeps us honest and, and chastens us. And so we always need to go to the word of God. We don't necessarily need to go to, um, what the, what maybe what other videos might be or whatever the teacher might say. Uh, it's best for us to go to the source, the word of God. Um, that's why we always say the word of God for the people of God, because this word is for you. Uh, there has been such a problem in many centuries past where, where people couldn't have access to the, to the Bible because of a language barrier. They believed that it was only supposed to be in, uh, in Latin originally. Um, uh, I mean, obviously it, this Bible did not come from Latin. It actually came from Hebrew and Greek, but we see that the uh, the church ended up taking it, saying, "Okay, it's going to be Latin, and um, and that's the true language." But that's not that that wasn't the case. And so now we have English uh, translations. That's what we read our Bibles: um, King James, English Standard versions, New International Version. All these versions point to the same Word of God that there's always been. But we always are to. Uh, obtain it, keep looking towards it, keep focusing on what the Word of God is saying, because the Word of God is for you. Uh, in, in chapter 12, there's a few things that uh, I wanted to point out. Uh, good people obtain favor from the Lord. So it's like, if you want to follow God's ways and trust in Him, you have the Lord's favor. It says that uh, he, he condemns the ones who devise wicked schemes. He's, the, uh, he's against the ones who don't love him, he's for the ones who do love him. Uh, no one can uh, be established through wickedness, but the righteous cannot be uprooted. Uh, the, the, in Psalm 1, it talks about someone who seeks after the word of God is like a tree planted by rivers of water, that you are that strong, you're fortified by having the word of God, by having Jesus Christ in your life, you are fortified. Um, it says in, uh, talks about a wife in verse 4. A wife of noble character is her husband's crown. Someone who's honest. Someone who is graceful. Someone who, who loves God. It is a great jewel in the crown uh, for, for a husband. It's his pride. It's his joy whenever there's a godly woman in the house. Um, in uh, verse 5, it says, The plants of the righteous are just, but the advice of the wicked is deceitful. Um, the the plans and uh, so it's so important for the righteous uh, to for people who are following God to to be confident the fact that the Lord is going to be with them that, uh, that the, no matter what the plan is that God is always going to be there with them. <clears throat> Let's see in verse eight, a person is praised according to their prudence, and one with a warped mind is despised. We see that the Lord's favor continues. That's what we keep talking about is the Lord's favor over someone. Verse 9 has a really good point in here. It's better to be a nobody and yet have a servant than to pretend to be somebody and have no food. I, I see this so often. There's a big identity crisis today where people are trying to be something that they're not. And, and that's an issue that we are running into that people have an identity crisis and who who they are, who they want to be. And, you know, truthfully, um, there's uh, you have already been, uh, you, God knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows who you are and, and, and what your tendencies might be. He's not asking you to get fixated on somebody else's uh, way of doing life or or, or he wants you to come to him. He has his own plan for you. He has his own personality and, and, and ways he wants you to be. We have to go into it. It's better to be someone who is, uh, is like a servant or who, who is a nobody. It's better to be a nobody and still love the Lord than it is to be somebody 
and have uh, pretend, it says pretend to be somebody that you're not. Be, pretend to be somebody, but you actually have no food. Uh, that's what it's talking about. Somebody, this, like there, there's someone who's trying to pretend like they're rich, but they actually have nothing to eat. Um, in verse 10, the righteous care for the needs of their animals. So for all you animal lovers, um, if you have an animal, if you take good care of them, there's something uh, noteworthy about you. And uh, the, it says the kindest acts of the wicked are cruel. Um, and after that, in contrast to verse 10. In verse 11, this is important. Those who work their land will have abundant food, but those who chase fantasies have no sense. So often we get, we, we want to chase our dreams. And I'm not against chasing desires what the Lord maybe have called you to be or to do, but we cannot just chase, uh, we cannot just go and, and, and go to as far of a land as we can find and, and go chase some idea of something that we feel like will lead to our personal discovery. We can find it here. Why? Because God is in all places. Uh, you don't have to go anywhere special to go find God. Uh, we see this, that it's better just to work diligently to what you have. Live in the now, work in what you have today. Study the Word of God, what you have today. Uh, till the ground, work diligently now instead of just trying to chase some fantasy it says that's foolish in verse 12 the wicked desire the stronghold of evildoers but the root of the righteous endures it's the same thing that you're planted you're planted whenever you trust in god when you trust in his ways and it says the evildoers are trapped by this their sinful talk and so the innocent escape trouble the innocent can escape trouble because they're not snared by, by their ways. They're not snared by their sins. Uh, that that's one of the that's why we have been reconciled back to God through Jesus Christ. We have to trust in Jesus. It's not just so that we can have hellfire insurance. It's because He rose from the dead. He provides life, not insurance from hell. He provides life. He provides uh, meaning. He provides freedom. Whenever we are caught in our sin, it says like in here in verse 13, evildoers are trapped by their sin. And see in verse 14, it says, from the fruit of their lips, people are filled with good things. When we follow Jesus and we, we believe in him, we trust in his ways, we are unashamed of him. People are being fed. People are being, uh, people are being uh, filled with good things. But the work of their hands, uh, it brings them good reward. It brings them prosperity. It brings them success. It brings them status. But with someone who does not trust in the Lord, someone who does not follow, the ways of the fool seems right to them. And it may even seem right to their bank account. But there is no, reward. There is no ultimate success. There is no fulfillment. There, there can be all types of... Uh, ideas of fulfillment, but once the name Jesus gets mentioned, it gets very offensive. It gets very divisive. And that is why the ones who are fools fall away because it, it, it is so, uh, it is so difficult. Do not allow the devil to uh, convince you that everyone who is, who is not a believer has it just as bad or just as good as you do. They don't. There's something about the name of Jesus. There's something about the power of the Holy Spirit that repels, that, that makes them upset, that makes them uncomfortable. And so we need to always remember that you are blessed if you have God. You're blessed if you have God, and if you don't, you're not. The ways of fools seem right to them, but the wise listen to advice. Fools show their annoyance at once with a prudent overlook and insult. That's the thing. That's, that's kind of the biggest, I think that's the, one of the biggest differences between a Christian and a non-Christian. And I think we can see that because when someone hears the name of Jesus and they're a believer, they say, whoa, that is great. But whenever someone who is not a believer hears the name of Jesus, it offends them. I don't get offended when I hear the name of Buddha or the name of Allah or, or any of the, uh, Muhammad. Any of the, they, they don't offend me. They don't bother me. It, but what bothers me is that someone is outside of Jesus Christ. But, but see, the thing is, is when someone, when I share Jesus Christ with somebody and they hear that name, 
That is when it divides. The Bible says, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through him. Also, it tells us that there's a narrow way, narrow way to the kingdom of heaven. Broad is the path to destruction. It's much easier. It's much easier for people to go in their own ways. Uh, it feels better for them. An honest witness tells the truth in verse 17, but a false witness tells lies. We see that there's truth. If you want to, if you want to have fruit of your relationship with Jesus, you or someone who tells the truth. The words of the reckless pierce like swords, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Truthful lips endure forever, but a lying tongue lasts only a moment. Deceit is in the heart of those who plot evil, but those who promote peace have joy. In verse 21, I like what it says, it says, no harm overtakes the righteous, but the wicked have their fill of trouble. And that's just how it is. It, it, when you are following Jesus, when you follow after his ways, he is always going to provide for you. And it may be hard because you're thinking, oh, I don't know if I can trust him in this moment. But you can. And that's all I can say is, but you can because he will. He will. But it will be in his timing and in his own way. But you will be provided for. It says, no harm overtakes the righteous. And verse 25, anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word cheers it up. At this, now he's telling this, the, the young man in Proverbs or, or the, 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 peop, the people who are seeking after wisdom. says, anxiety weighs down the heart, but a kind word can cheer it up, can, can encourage. The righteous, they choose their friends carefully. They, they don't just give themselves away to anyone, but the way of the wicked leads them astray. And the wise use what they gain, use what they have. A fool doesn't. A fool just makes a mockery of it, just um, will find other ways. So it's very important that we are diligent, that we seek after God in every single way. Because we want to obtain favor with the Lord, don't you? We need to seek after His ways. We need to seek after God. We need to seek after Him. That doesn't mean go away somewhere. It doesn't mean go find it in another country. No, it means go find it in the Word of God. The Word of God. Come to church. Um, embrace the other peoples that, that have this Holy Spirit, that believe in God. It's so important for us to be with each other and to trust the Lord God who is almighty, who is omnipotent, who is in over all things, and he will provide for you. He will provide. He loves you. He loves you. That he sent Jesus on the cross to die for you. That all you have to do is believe on him. Thank you so much for tuning in to this Proverbs uh, Bible study. This is, um, is a joy to do. I hope that you got something out of it. This is Proverbs chapter 12, and uh, I look forward to reading Proverbs 13 next week. God bless you. And I hope to see you this weekend sometime. God bless. Bye-bye.